Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Conscious Culinary Podcast. I'm your host, Tracy Clark, your wellness chef. Today, we've got a good one for you. I think we should all just start off with a nice cleansing breath. Let's get into this, okay? I want everybody's attention. That's why we started with the breath, because we've got a good message here. I am joined in the studio by two ladies today. They are from a campaign called I Eat, I Vote. It is a group of farmers, and they're trying to educate people about some of the issues that are facing agriculture right now. And I think it's an important message because here I am with Conscious Culinary telling people all the time, eat local, eat what's in season, eat organic, all this stuff, you know, and and I have two kids, so I just kind of want to go to the grocery store and pick up the food. But it's not just a given, right? We need to understand the issues facing our farmers so that we can maintain the availability to the food that we want with the standards that we want as well. So let's get into it. I want to introduce two people here that are joining me. It's Sarah Howard. She is from the Eatonville Nursery. You are, you said south of Graham. Yes, yes. Down kind of close over to by, Mount Rainier. close to Mount Rainier, which is such a beautiful area. And you were telling me you have about 70 acres, but you're farming about five acres well, the, the nursery is oh, the nursery. about five acres. The nursery yep. is what you've got 70 acres out there. Yep. Most of it's cow pasture. Yeah, that's okay. Um, it's still taking care of all of that. And yes. I mean, you were telling me you guys have native plants. You have beef cattle. You have blueberries, tomatoes, basils, flowers. I mean, everything. And you're a fourth generation farmer. That's correct. And then we also have Rosella Mosby from Mosby Farms. They are in the upper Green River Valley um, outside of Auburn. And you have 500 acres, you say. And are usually farming about 350. At a time, yes. yes. So we steward 500, and some of that is forestry and buffers along the river. Um, and sometimes if we're not actively farming land, then it'll be in cover crops. So we are usually actively farming 350 acres for production. Wow, that's big time. And you're first generation. We are first generation. Wow. So started, did you guys go and buy buy the land and get it all started, or do you take uh, over the farm? No. So um, my husband um, made his first delivery of acorn squash uh, at 17 years old in the back of a pickup truck, which would never happen these days because now yeah. we have all these crazy food yeah. regulations, and you have to deliver in a refrigerated truck and uh, he started doing hay in the Ording Valley with his brother um, in the late 70s and um, kind of his dad leased him a piece of land and said, here you go, like jump in. And there was an elderly uh, Italian lady who became his mentor and said, you should be growing leeks and zucchini and acorn squash and some of these other things. And, and that really just became his focus and uh, what he wanted to do, and he just wholeheartedly jumped in, and that's what he's been doing ever since. So slowly um, building upon the previous year's season. Um, I missed uh, I missed all the years of driving a tractor with the headlights on till midnight and <laughs> eating lettuce out of the field because that's what you can afford, right? <laughs> right. And uh, I truly admire him. It's um, – uh, I can say that he's the hardest working guy that I know. So. Wow. Well, very cool. Um, well, welcome to the show. Um, I'm excited to get your message out there because when I spoke to you guys the first time, I know that I felt like just some mega knowledge was being dropped that I was like, this is information everybody needs. Um, because it's easy to understand the process of food from the grocery store to the plate. Some people may go as far as looking from the seed to the plate, but as Rosella was saying last night, we want people to think more from the vote to the plate because that's when we're really um, making change and also holding on to the things that we value that are going right. Yeah. Um, but we don't, we're so disconnected and people aren't really aware of just um, what's what some of the issues are facing the farmers. So can you guys tell me this I eat, I vote? Um, how did this all come about? Is this a new thing? Has this been going on for a while? This is new as of about August. Mm -hmm. And the idea was born really out of frustration with, with watching decisions being made in local and state and national government that affect farmers in big ways 
that people don't understand. You know, they, they vote for them because it sounds nice or it makes them feel good, but they don't understand how it impacts their food security. Right, right. In fact, you were just telling me about, um, like, if somebody wanted to vote to increase the wage so that people working on farms are being paid more, it's not necessarily, I mean, we everybody would think, yeah, I want to be on board with that, but there's... Well, and we truly, like, as a hand, we did hand-harvested farm growing fresh market vegetables for our region we're truly we truly are looking for dependable labor not cheap labor and i think that's a huge misconception however our produce we get paid depending on what the market is and if your buyer is out of a midwestern town where the minimum wage is eight dollars and seventy cents he he can't even or she, cannot even remotely identify with our zip code, what it costs to live here, what it costs to produce that box, our propane guy, our tire guy, our uh, cardboard box guy, everybody pays a higher minimum wage. Therefore, it costs more for us to produce that box of vegetables than it does in some other state where um, where the wage isn't as high. And yeah. so... We, um, or even in a different country, you know, we have, we have, uh, <laughs> we have an 87 year old foreman who smokes more in cigarettes in a day than, than people make in Mexico in a day. And that is a somewhat sad representation mm -hmm. of our, our competition when, mm -hmm. when we can import a box of cucumbers that, um, we're trying to compete on price. And so... So, yes, when we are talking about uh, wages, there's, there's a bigger picture that we need to address yeah. for sure. Now, can you tell me when you, each of you, found out about this, this campaign, what was it for you that made you go, yes, I want to get involved? Well, we actually we were part it. of the ones that started the campaign. <laughs> yes. So, yeah. so there's a group of King and Pierce County farmers that came together, um, and a couple actually uh, from around the state that that put it put their input together or in on it. Um, it. It just kind of came out of conversations with with some other farmers that that were like, we need to we need to elevate the conversation. Yeah, and it's you know when you see the need. And you know that you can contribute, you can help. I mean, how, how do you say no? <laughs> right. You, you want to be a part of that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And the, the goal truly is, is, you know, agriculture is the second largest industry in the state. And, and we don't talk about that enough. We talk about mm -hmm. aerospace. We talk about tech a lot. We don't talk about agriculture. We don't make that connection that, um, agriculture, whether whether it's exporting hay, it's exporting apples, it's exporting cherries, you know, we, we have a very small carbon footprint when we are growing fresh market produce and we're sending it to our local grocery chain versus importing it. So, so when we're talking like growing something from the soil up, right, versus bringing it in from the box up. Mm -hmm. There's a lot yep. of benefit when we're stewarding land here versus bringing it in from somewhere else, like our, right. like Chile so, or yeah. Mexico. Right. Or, yeah. right. And when we're talking about, like, you know, people don't always realize, too, you have, say, Alar, which we haven't used here uh, in Washington or in Washington State on Apple's I don't. I think it's banned in the it's, country. Yeah. Yeah. But yet, that's a that's an application that is not banned in Argentina or Chile. And so, we're actually importing grapes or apples from another country where they're still using that application. And yeah. so, we have a food safety standard here that is, uh, especially when we're talking organic in Washington State. Washington State organic certification is the highest food safety standard of anywhere. Wow. And so. So those are things that we should be celebrating yeah. um, in our state, and we should be supporting when it's time to support our local farmers. We're not only supporting uh, our local farmer being in business, but we're supporting local land stewardship, and we're supporting a low, lower carbon footprint. Well, all of that really lines up with <laughs> Conscious Culinary. <laughs> Now, I know one thing that I learned from you guys is that the average age of the farmer is 59. That really registered with me because 
just not knowing much about farming, but you look at that statistic and you go, okay, then then who's going to be making, who's going to be growing the food? Who's growing <laughs> yeah. the food in 10, 20, 30 years? Mm-hmm. Um, what are the implications of a statistic like that? Well, in 20 years, they'll still be growing the food. They'll st- They'll still be farming. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know a farmer yeah, who actually retires farming. anytime soon. <laughs> so yeah. thankfully, farmers work for a really long time. <laughs> yes, but, they do. But obviously, this is this is an issue as well because yes. the industry itself does not make itself attractive because of a lot of no, these issues. It's, it's one of the most dangerous industries that you can be involved in um, mm-hmm. when you think about the injuries. Uh, the average farm income nationwide and I think it was 2018 was negative 17 or 1800 dollars I mean it's not really lucrative oh my gosh. but we do it because we love it I can't imagine doing anything else and I think if I didn't do it I, I would feel maybe guilty like I know how to produce food for people and that need is there why why would I not right and you guys do all kinds of stuff. I mean, you, do. you were saying you do, you have your flowers, and so sometimes you're doing flowers for weddings, and then you have a come and pick your own blueberries area of the farm, right. and, and then the nursery, and they're all native plants, which I love. I was saying my husband is going to be like, give me her number, because that's what he wants to do in our yard. Um, and you have the beef. I mean, you just have so many different avenues, and that's that's what's so I think what what we should be celebrating as well is the diversity that people have, too. We're not just talking about a big land full of corn. We're talking about beautiful products and products that enrich our lives as well. Um, Can you guys speak to, you know, what your families are thinking, your children are thinking as they move up through this world? Are they, you think they're going to be taking over the farms? My kids really enjoy blueberry season at our farm. Um, They like that people come out and they get to talk to people. My, my kids, my, particularly my older two, they're nine and 11, they can go out there and give a local food spiel probably better than I can mm. to their friends. They can talk about the importance of having a farm and and they love it. And they didn't get to do it as much this year because I kept telling them, no, you have to stay six feet away from, yeah. <laughs> from all the people that come to visit. This is the new rule. Um, but they were still out there. They were still putting their mask on and helping out in the booth. And having that accessibility is, is really important um, for for local kids, especially. You know, we want them to be able to come out and and experience being, especially right now, out of the house. Yeah. You know, out of their apartment, come out and see the farm, and and get to get to do that. But yeah, my kids, at least one of them, I think I, I can see yeah. wanting to continue on with this. That's great. What about you, Rosella? Yeah, we have four children, um, ranging 12 to 25, and the older two um, work on the farm, and uh, the number three, she's 14, I see her probably having the most interest on the farm end. Um, Our oldest runs our food safety program, and our second oldest, uh, he's pretty diverse. He can drive tractors and deliver and um, it's it's a challenge to find truck drivers and people who do all kinds of things, right? So he fills many roles on the farm. Um, my youngest is he's our little techie. I see him being far more interested in robotics than than farming. So it's like, hey, make us a robotic weeder. I don't know. We'll see what he <laughs> yes. does. But um, but I don't I don't know. Like I think I think at the end of the day, we kind of wonder if they look at us and think, oh my gosh, is it, is it worth the challenge? They see our day-to-day struggle. Um, and I think uh, when it comes to the regulations and the, the stresses of legislative session and, and going, oh my gosh, I can't believe they're going to make this rule. Uh, and, you know, they've created a, you know, a new rule that we're going to have to follow. There's, there's a lot of barriers to entry to young people. Uh, wanting to get into agriculture, and I think that's a really, a really important um, subject we should be thinking about at some point. When you have a young farmer, we have a local young farmer that I'm thinking about who, who's taken that big plunge, and and that guy needs to be looking at you know growing at some point because he's a young guy, and so it's like if he's farming 20 acres right now, he needs to be looking at farming 50 or 60 in the next 10 years, and the guy who's 
or woman who's farming 50 acres needs to be looking at farming 70 to 100. I mean, at some point we have to be reinvesting into these young people who have an interest because our older farmers are going to be aging out and we need to ensure that we have food security for the future. And so uh, creating barriers to entry is uh, something that um, needs to be addressed. We need to be figuring out how we how we open that door, not close it more. And I right. think it's important too to to look at the history that we have with our communities. I mean, I, I'd be lying if I said I've never thought about leaving the area because when I look at land prices and other places, you know, I think, gosh, I could I could go buy a place, my own place. But I, you know, this is our community, that mm-hmm. our people are here. This is where we want to raise our kids and I don't want to go start over somewhere else. And and I want to keep having that history and, you know, and staying in the community. Yeah. Can you guys tell me what, your favorite parts of what you do? Your favorite parts of farming? <laughs> oh, everybody I mean, let's says put it's that a lifestyle. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, you know, I I cringe when I hear that sometimes. Yes, I, I totally get that it's a lifestyle. But it's the business that um, enables the lifestyle. And, and at the end of the season, when... Uh, the river starts to back up into the field and we become complementary water storage for King County (laughs) and habitat for ducks. Um, It's kind of cool to grab a bottle of wine and sit in the chairs and watch the ducks land and, and count our blessings. And, and, um, and it's, it's, it's a moment in time, right? Where you are thankful to be able to put in the hard work, but it I, honestly, like it's a it's a struggle, it's a struggle to make all that happen sometimes, and um, we take it for granted. I I have to <laughs> sometimes agree with you, and so, so it 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 is. It's a and you can only continue that cycle if it's profitable to do so. Right. Yeah. Yes. And you were saying. And you, if we don't do it, who's going to do it for us? Right? Yes. Because you were yeah. saying it's important to grow. Yeah, you know what and you were like if you're a young guy you need to look at having you know this much more if you're here you need to be looking at this is that because the growth is so important to a farm well it's not not always the growth but it is the reinvestment so there's this expectation that we read that we become more more um efficient right right and so on our farm, we're first generation. We're still paying for buildings. We're still paying for land. We're, you know, mm-hmm. we're still trying. Like, we don't have a dad or grandpa that paid for the first round of things. Mm-hmm. And so a lot of our trucks are, are we don't buy anything new. We can't afford anything new. And so when you are, um, when you are thriving, then you're able to go, oh, hey, let's buy this better cultivator. Let's buy this more efficient thing. Let's. Let's um, buy a harvester. Oh, my gosh. I would love to buy a leek harvester. Like, love to buy a leek harvester. <laughs> it's on the list. I can't afford one, yeah. but I would love to buy one. And, you know, so you reinvest. Like, like I think farmers go, oh, I have, like, two nickels. I'm going to, like, figure out how to make them work for me. Yep. Right. That's just it. They take those two nickels and figure out how to make them work for them. Mm-hmm. They're not like, oh, hey, I'm going to go out and, you know, buy this or buy that. They're not They're not a frivolous, yeah. you know, there's not a whole lot of pretentiousness in the world of agriculture, I don't see. No. It sounds like a job of service it is. at the end of the day. Um, how much do you feel that the farming is your your job, your career, or your purpose? I think it's all purpose. It's, yeah, it's all it's all there. And I don't even yeah. live on the farm. I, I drive down there every day and with my kids. Um, right now, part of that's because they have Wi-Fi and we don't at home, so kids have to go, <laughs> go to their school at the farm. Right. But, I mean, that's that's my life. That's what, that's what we do. Yeah. What would you say, if you can give somebody listening, like what are the top – three issues right now that you're like, these are the most important issues that are facing us that I really want people to think about when they are voting and when they're choosing candidates. 
Um, I'm going to put carbon sequestration out there, carbon taxes. Um, it's not quite as cut and dry as sometimes it's presented. Um, well, explain what that is. Like carbon okay, taxes. so your carbon footprint, you have to pay yeah. tax. Well, you want to take this? This is kind of your baby, <laughs> yeah. but I so we we've, feel we've seen about it. Uh, we've seen it. Carbon taxes have been on the ballot a few times. Okay. Right? And it's been voted down by the um, citizens in our state three times. So that means people voted against, against it. Against it. That's correct. Yes. Okay. And um, it's been presented so a couple times in the last legislative session as a carbon tax and then cap and trade. Um, it has yet yet to pass. It's It's not going away. The issue when it comes to agriculture uh, is that we do a lot of carbon sequestration, which means we are building soil, we're pulling carbon from the air, so we're actually doing good work. Okay. And we're using our equipment for, like, we're in Washington. It rains here. We have six months to do our our farming for the year. Six months to, mm-hmm. like, we do yeah. on our farm. We have six months to make a year's worth of money. We're not right. in California, okay? Nope. So, right. so they have 10 months to farm. We have six. And so you can't, you can't, you know, you can't make the same rules California has when it comes to agriculture. It, it just doesn't equate. Right. Right. And, and you can't make rules about what a, a business needs to perhaps pay, um, fees they need to pay based on the, you know, the carbon they're producing if you don't also take into account the good work that, that business is doing. And right. most of the time, right. the legislation does not address that. Right. So let's clarify. So basically, it's paying a tax on what the ne- – they, they want your to carbon tax emissions. you on your carbon emissions. Correct. But you're saying we are, it's a good thing, but it, they need to know exactly what it is because there's goodness as well. We're also sequestering carbon. Right. Right. So we are driving tractors around. But those tractors are are not used that much, and we have, you know, as Rose has mentioned, a great deal of land that is habitat and buffers and, you know, fallow ground that's right. doing a lot of good work for carbon sequestration, and it's doing that because the farmers are managing it. Okay. So are you saying, like, this is where I just want to make sure people understand, where, where do you think there should be a tax or shouldn't be a tax? Not on agriculture. Not on on agriculture. You shouldn't think that should happen. And you're saying it hasn't passed. But then, too, the problem is that you have a small farmer who doesn't have, say, like, tanks at his farm. Okay? So you guys don't have tanks at your farm. Mm, Little ones. Little ones. But, say, we have tanks on our farm. So we, if even if there is an exemption for agriculture, like, we would be exempt because we're filling the tanks at our farm. But if you have a small guy... Just getting started has his little little tractors, right? Yeah, he's got to go to the gas station. There's no exemption for that guy. You're still yep. hurting that smaller farmers market yep. style farmer or the guy, the bee guy, right? Who's who's still in agriculture? Who's taking his bees to somebody's field and then moving them over here or whatever? He's still getting harmed by by the good work that he's doing in agriculture by a tax because he's filling up his fuel tanks in a trailer to take for equipment or what have you or his trucks. Right. And, you know, what's interesting, what I think, is that nowadays so many people are becoming more conscious, right? And when we hear things like paying the workers more and then charging on tax because of these carbon emissions and we're like, oh, my gosh, yes, we need a tax. That's not good. That's the problem. People want to do good. They want they to make a stand. They want to make the world a better place. But this is a big area where they they don't really understand what the deal is yeah i think a lot of those things tug at our emotions and so we're making emotion based policy versus practical policy and when it comes to food security we really need to make sure that our policies are practical and um set for the future of our bellies Uh, we have full bellies we can work to put clothes on our back and roofs over our head if we Mm -hmm. if we don't have food security here we become you know we become lenient on uh, leaning on other people and and that's scary in my mind so very you know I, I think too we we often don't think about the work that farms do um and i think that our 
our campaign actually just released a video on this yep. uh, yesterday. Yesterday, I think it was yep. Sunday. Um, about um, what is today? Have I lost track of what day it is? It's, it's Wednesday. 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 I almost said Tuesday. Yeah, you know, you got a pumpkin patch. They all like they all blend together after a while. Like I just know the end is near. The end is near. I end think. Is near. Anyway, um, food banks. Food banks. Yeah. So you know when when farms have abundance of product and there's enough labor and and um, and and product in the field, those extras end up at the food bank and right. that's good for the community too so yeah. i think it's really important to recognize that when when we're not under the thumb of you know over regulatory burdens that that we get to share exactly yeah. because it's not a straight line it's no a circle it's all no. like you said it's reinvesting in yourself it's mm-hmm. reinvesting in you know where that food then goes it's just yeah it's 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 the whole cycle of the business and the farm that's the way the farm works as well everything working together and I loved your comment about when the water comes in and you're sitting there watching the ducks land like that as well is connecting you more just to yourself and to the land which is just so positive for ourselves and our bodies and and it's a it's a really beautiful thing to highlight as far as the lifestyle where can people get more information about this so if they're like i want to see that video that you guys made or i want to learn more about some of the issues where can people go we're on social media so my fork supports farms will find us on facebook or instagram my forks support my my fork supports farms or i eat i vote i eat i vote my fork Mm -hmm. supports farms yep Mm -hmm. and we have a website so yep. I eat, I com or Mike Fork Supports Farms.com. That's right. It takes you to the same website. And um, yeah. Yep. Now we only have about four minutes left or three minutes left, but what does the ideal world looks like look like? Let's let's <laughs> paint it. Let's paint it. Let's put it out there to the universe. I, what are we I, striving for? What I do think we want? The ideal world looks like people who want to you know, children who want to grow up to be doctors, artists, lawyers, teachers can do that because they don't have to grow their food. Mm-hmm. Right. And that they can eat healthy food because it's still grown locally. I think we've lost sight of that as a community. I think um, I think people forget that they can go to work and work a 60-hour work week or, you know, take their kid to soccer and go have a massage at the end of the day, which I would love to have right now. <laughs> um, all of these things that we get to do and swing by the grocery store and fill our basket and pay for it and go home. And, yeah. you know, you don't have to plant a seed and wait 90 to 120 days to see if it's going to grow or feed an animal or you have a choice. You have, As a consumer, you have a choice. Yep. And it's farmers that provide that freedom of choice. And and so as a community, we really need to make sure that we um, allow farmers to continue to provide that choice. I love it. Well, I mean, I'm in full support because here I am always telling people the importance of voting with your dollar, right? Well, you can actually vote as well. <laughs> Take it one step further. And also, you know, I feel like the quality of food is going to be heightened when it has a shorter distance to travel as well. And when you're trying to pick something in Mexico and make sure that by the time I go to pick it off the shelf, it's in the right place we want it to be and it's going to be ripe and yep. ready to be eaten is is tough. And it takes compromise, I think, sometimes. Yeah. Um, and I'm all about the energy and the food and everything. And so really, it, there's on so many levels a reason why we need more conversations like this, to become more aware of what the farming industry is all about, um, the benefits of what you guys do, because we're, we're benefiting from it all, but we really are taking it advantage of it. And we, we don't realize, um, like you said, just the, the choice that farmers provide. Um, and unfortunately, I also think I'll just have to say there's so much non-food out there. We're also becoming more disconnected from just how beautiful food is as well. Yeah. Um, so thank you so much for being thank here. You. Um, I appreciate you sharing your ideas and taking your time and for starting the I Eat, I Vote campaign so that we can talk about this some more. And hopefully this sparks some interest. So check out their website, I Eat, I Vote, My Fork Supports Farms. 
Facebook, online. It's all over there. Anything else we need to share before we go? No. I Thank still you. like mangoes, papaya, and pineapple. You know, pineapple. <laughs> but we don't grow those here. So when nope. it's time, you got to support the local people. That's right. You got to support the locals. <laughs> Thank you that. so much. Thanks. Thank you. Everybody have a good one and stay healthy. 